you know, you recently put out this TED talk and, mm. you know, one of you, just in the beginning of Sacred Sons, the messaging was returning the father archetype and how that shows up for us in our work is that many of the brothers who maybe grew up without a present father um, are returning that father into themselves and within their own families. That's where the real return yeah. is. That's something I've witnessed in you. What was it like putting your life story together and presenting it, you know, with, with, you know, with your understanding of fatherhood from this place? Yeah, it was, it was a deep process for me because originally the talk, when I put forward the idea, there were going to be some themes of fatherhood, but it was going to be a bit more about masculinity and what it means to be a man and then a link with, with growing up without a father. And then the day that I had sat down, I had the idea I was going to write the script. I'd kind of sat down at my laptop a few times and started trying to write. So I was like in the process, the process had started. I was out with my son and I got a call saying that my father had died and I hadn't seen my dad for 20 years. Um, he was a drug addict and an alcoholic when I was growing up. And in the last three or four years of his life, we made peace because of this work, because of what I've done with sacred sons, I was able to call him and say, Hey, I don't need anything from you, but let me share how I feel. And we had found this beautiful peace in our, in our relationship. And the, the thing was the week before he passed away, I'd had messaged him and I said, we're looking at doing sacred sons out in South Africa. I might be coming to see you in the next year. I had a conversation with one of our bros out there and he had replied and said, Oh, I'm, I'm like really excited about that. My dad was an addiction counselor once he got sober. So he was in his own personal development journey. He was seeing what I was doing. So it was at that moment being initiated by this grief of losing my father and the little boy inside me, it landing in my body that I was never going to have that moment of reuniting with him, which, which was a, a big moment of grief for me. The only thing that I could think of doing was honoring him and channeling my grief into this into this talk. So I started to write and just started to write and pour all of that grief and all of those tears, um, into the, into the TEDx talk, which in one way was so beautiful because it really is, um, the talk for me is an honoring of my father and it's an honoring of the journey of the men in my lineage and the fatherlessness and me kind of saying enough is enough with this moment. And at the same time, every single day waking up and rehearsing that and replaying it for you know, four to six months is super intense, really, really intense. I, I, I got to a stage where I felt, can I actually grieve this anymore? Do I fit? It's so in my psyche, in my body every single day. So it was a profound, profound process. And when I got up on stage and I delivered it and, you know, I was thinking about, okay, I need to remember my lines and all of this sort of stuff. As soon as I just let go, and I saw the picture of my dad come up, which is how it started. I saw him. It was everything just evaporated. And I knew that I was meant to be in that moment. And that if that message, if there was one single mother, one man who grew up without a father, one teenage boy who saw that talk in the audience or online, and it in some way supported them, that my work was done and that my father's work was done. So it was it was a profound experience and, t and challenging, but... I'm glad that it happens. Profound, challenging, and honoring. You know, I think in our culture, um, we don't always do the best job of uh, taking care of our dead, honoring the those who have come before us. And that's a big part of yeah. our work. And we talk about it as ancestors, as, it's, as, as if it's something so far away from us. Um, but here you are in, in transmuting the grief into this honoring. I think that's it's a beautiful creation. The last words that I say in the talk is I, um, I speak to my father and I say that I forgive him and I can genuinely say hand on heart, I'm at a place in my life where I do forgive him and his biggest challenges have become my biggest blessings. And I wouldn't have said that when I was growing up and I was a teenager and I was so angry all the time, you know, so much repressed rage. Why? And I, I couldn't even understand or comprehend that it was even from him not being there. But obviously now in hindsight, I know that. And for me to be able to forgive and to be able to honor him for changing his life and what he did do felt, um, yeah, it felt, it felt right. It actually felt really at peace in that moment that there wasn't one 
remnants of anger or frustration. It, it was yeah. everything's happened exactly as it's meant to be. Yeah, that's when we we cross that fine line from forgiveness into acceptance of all things. When we make it to that place of like, yeah, like I'm here. The the willingness to just accept everything because because we have the totality of it uh, through that departure through that death. If there's a young man out there listening right now, holding on to resentment, holding on to anger, give us like a, give me a tool or like a, a, maybe an understanding that you have from your experience of what's a, what's a way to begin taking a step on the path to forgiveness. 